Hi students, I am Pravin Sebastian Paul. In this lecture, we are discussing the UML state machines. So this UML state machine is also a UML behavioral diagram. A state machine diagram is also known as state chart diagram or simply a state transition diagram. This diagram shows the order of states underwent by an object within the system. It captures the software system's behavior. It models the behavior of a class a subsystem, a package, and a complete system. It turned out to be an efficient way of modeling the interactions and collaborations in the external entities and the system. It models event-based system to handle the state of an object. It also defines several distinct state of a component within the system. Each object or each component has a specific state. So next we are discussing different type of state machine diagram. Firstly, a behavioral state machine and secondly, a protocol state machine. The behavioral state machine diagram records the behavior of an object within the system and it depicts an implementation of a particular entity. It models the behavior of the system. Second one is a protocol state machine. It captures the behavior of the protocol. The protocol state machine depicts the change in the state of the protocol and parallel changes within the system, but it does not portray the implementation of a particular component. So my dear students, next we are discussing why we are using a state diagram or a state machine diagram. Since this diagram records the dynamic view of a system, the diagram portrays the behavior of a software application. During a lifespan, an object underwent several states such that the lifespan exists until the program is executed. Each state depicts some useful information about the object. The diagram blueprints an interactive system that responds back to either the internal events or the external ones. The execution flow from one state to another is represented by a state machine diagram. It visualizes an object state from its creation to its termination. The main purpose is to depict each state of an individual object. The diagram represents an interactive system and the entities inside the system. The state diagram records the dynamic behavior of the system. So now we are discussing the different notations of a state diagram. The state machine diagram constitutes the following notations. Firstly, an initial state, which defines the initial or the beginning state of a system, and it is represented by a black filled circle. Second one is a final state. This final state represents the final or the end state of a system, and it is denoted by a filled circle present within a circle. Third one is the decision box. It is a diamond shape that represents the decisions to be made on the basis of an evaluated guard. The fourth one is a transition state, a change of control from one state to another due to the occurrence of some event is termed as transition. It is presented by a arrow labeled with an event due to which the change has ensured. Next one is a state box. It depicts the conditions or circumstances of a particular object of a class at a specific point of time. A rectangle with a rounded corner is used to represent the state box. So my dear students, now we are dealing with different types of states. The UML consists of three different states like simple state, composite state and submachine state. A simple state does not constitute any substructure. When it comes to the composite state, it consists of a nested or substates such that it does not contain more than one initial state and one final state. It can be nested to any level. The third one is a submachine state. The submachine state is semantically identical to the composite state, but it can be reused. So these are the different types of states available in UML diagrams. And next we are dealing with how to draw a state machine diagram. The state machine diagram is used to portray various states underwent by an object. 
the change in one state to another is due to the occurrence of some events all of the possible state of a particular component must be identified before drawing a state machine diagram the primary focus of the state machine diagram is to depict the state of a system these states are essential while drawing a state transition diagram the objects states and events due to which the state transition occurs must be acknowledged before the implementation of a state machine diagram following are the different steps that are to be incorporated while drawing a state machine diagram firstly a unique and understandable name should be assigned to the state transition that describe the behavior of the system secondly out of the multiple object only the essential object are implemented third one is a proper name should be given to the events and the transitions so my students next year i's a question when to use a state machine diagram the state machine diagram implements the real world model as well as the object oriented systems it records the dynamic behavior of the system which is used to differentiate between the dynamic and the static behavior of a system it portrays the changes underwent by an object from the start to the end it basically envisions how triggering of an event can cause a change within the system and a state machine diagram is used for modeling the object state of a system for modeling the reactive system as it consists of reactive objects for pinpointing the events responsible for a state transition and for implementing forward and reverse engineering so my dear students these are the different aspects of a state machine diagram or simply a state diagram so my dear students as we mentioned a state diagram shows a state machine that depicts the control flow of an object from one state to another a state machine portrays the sequence of state which an object undergoes due to events and their responses to events so my dear students this state diagram contains of states transition between different states event causing transition and actions due to events and these diagrams are used for modeling objects which are reactive in nature so my dear students hope you had understood this topic so dear students kindly go through the assignment question our question is write notes on state diagram or state chart diagram or state machine diagram so my dear students in the upcoming lecture we will discuss an example for this state diagram so dear students see you soon until then goodbye thank you and all the best